For nearly the last 50 years, the BMW 7 Series has carried the torch as the flagship executive sedan in BMW's lineup. In fact, when an all new version of this car is introduced, it's a pretty big deal. So for 2023, we are now looking at the fully redesigned seventh generation of the 7 Series. And as you can see, it has a design that is unlike any other BMW before it. It has all new powertrains, including an all electric option called the i7, and the interior has been completely redone with a 31 inch theater screen for rear seat passengers. So if you guys have been looking for the ultimate executive luxury sedan from Germany, has BMW created that with the all new 7 Series? Stay tuned to find out. So obviously we're going to talk about the design of the new 7 Series in more detail, but the first thing I want to show you guys, however, since this is the company's flagship sedan, let's go ahead and pop the hood and talk about the powertrain of this particular 760i xDrive. Now underneath the hood, we have a 4.4 liter twin turbocharged direct injection V8 augmented by a 48 volt mild hybrid system. BMW says this powertrain has been completely redesigned versus the previous generation V8. In fact, it now wears a 760 badge, which used to be reserved for 12 cylinder 7 series. However, BMW has confirmed no 7 series, at least here in America, will have a 12 cylinder underneath the hood. Now the power output figures are pretty impressive. This model here is rated at 536 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. That horsepower figure practically matches that of the electric i7, which has twin electric motors. And then for those of you who want a little bit more of a sensible powertrain that's more fuel efficient, you can also get the 740i, which has a three liter uh, turbocharged inline six with a 48 volt mild hybrid that makes 375 horsepower. Now this is all connected to an eight speed automatic. The six cylinder version is only rear wheel drive while this uh, V8 version only comes standard with the company's xDrive all-wheel drive system. Same thing for the electric model. Uh, and in terms of zero to 60 performance, BMW claims this model should do zero to 60 in around 4.1 seconds. It gets about 18 in the city, 26 on the highway, on premium gas, premium is required. You can get up to 2531 if you guys go for the six cylinder. Uh, and then curb weight figures, this vehicle weighs in at just over 5,000 pounds. It'll reach a top speed of around 155 miles an hour. But let's go ahead and close up the hood. You can see it has two latches there to help with uh, fitment and just the overall stability of it. But looking at the design, obviously BMW loves to introduce controversial designs, especially on their flagship vehicle. You can see this particular one here, the 760, has the M Sport package, which includes the blacked out kidney grills. Uh, and you also have a new headlight design where the headlight modules are divorced or separate from the actual LED daytime running lights. You can see there are Savarsky crystals built into the actual uh, headlight cluster along with the LED daytime running light. You can see LED turn signals. They just sparkle and look beautiful out in the sun. And then you have BMW's adaptive full LED headlights with their, I believe their laser light technology. Uh, these are swiveling. Uh, it certainly looks interesting, especially with the white paint with the black accents. You have some functional openings here along with some active grill shutters and the kidney grills. Keep in mind, you can also get a luxury line on the i7 that will uh, put some chrome accents in the grill. There's the typical BMW badge here. And you can really see the 7 Series has a very low and wide stance to it, a really big presence to it, which is what you expect when you're looking at a flagship luxury sedan like this. You demand that it has presence to it, and the 7 Series certainly has it. Whether you love or hate the design, I'm still very much um, getting used to it. However, when I first saw something like the new 4 Series and M3 and M4, the big grills kind of were a little polarizing, but I eventually, they grew on me, so perhaps that'll be the same thing for the 7 Series. Uh, keep in mind, looks are always subjective. So let me know in the comments below what you think of the design. But looking at the side profile, you can see this is a big sedan. In America, BMW will only offer it in one size, which by the way, BMW has stretched the overall length by over five inches on this new generation. At 212 inches in overall length, this is a good four inches longer than the current generation Mercedes-Benz S-Class, which is just insane. Its wheelbase is a little over 126.6 inches long, about an inch longer versus the prior generation. And this vehicle certainly looks big for when you look at the side profile. Now, looking at the wheels, you can see this M Sport version uh, has a black finished uh, five-spoke design wheel. This is a 21-inch alloy 
wrapped in a 255 with tire in the front, a fatter 285 at the back, even though this is all wheel drive. Remember, this is a rear drive biased vehicle. You can see the brake rotors are huge. You have multi-piston calipers behind them on the front. You also have adaptive four corner air suspension, and you also have the BMW's rear wheel steering, their four wheel steering system, which is standard on the V8 versions. That's gonna help shorten the turning radius, BMW says, by uh, a little over two and a half feet. Now, looking at the side mirrors, you can see they're not black painted, but you do have some black accents with the integrated cameras, you have the uh, integrated turn signals, uh, you have this panoramic glass roof, which is standard. Uh, this roof, however, does not open. We'll talk about why that doesn't open later on. Then you can see the door handles, kind of similar to what we've seen in the new iX and uh, i7, or I'm sorry, the uh, iX and the uh, i4, where you have to kind of stick your hand in there. And then these doors are also power opening and closing, which is a feature that BMW has never put on the 7 Series. Uh, that's something that they used to say for Rolls, Rolls Royce. And then looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see it's got a very blocky design element to it. Actually, if you hate the front, you're probably going to end up liking the rear. It's a lot more conservative, but it also has some nice presence to it. You can see the taillights. They kind of have like a blacked out element over here with this full LED design. You have this subtle rear lip spoiler that you get with the sport package. And then there's an S760i badge along with the xDrive badge. The exhaust system, you can see it's got quad outlet exhaust, although it's technically just part of the rear bumper piece. Uh, and you also have some more black trim that goes well with the white. The V8 itself uh, is a wonderful powertrain, which we'll talk about later on when we go into the driving seat. But opening up the trunk, you can see the trunk capacity actually only measures around 13.7 cubic feet. That's actually about the same as what you get in like a three series. I'm surprised the trunk isn't large by the dimensions, but you can see once you look inside the trunk, the seats obviously don't fold down in a 60-40 manner, uh, but it is a pretty decent size. There is a little bit of storage to the side as well. And then if you want to lift this up right here, you can see the 12 volt battery is back here, but there's no underfloor storage. So obviously a sedan isn't the, always the most practical, but the new 7 Series has a decent sized trunk that's about the same size as the current generation S-Class. All right, so the exterior of the new 7 Series is definitely either a love it or hate it proposition, but I can guarantee you, most of you are going to love this fully redesigned interior that finally feels worthy of its flagship status. But before we get inside, I wanna show you guys the key fob for the vehicle. You can see this is the newer fob that I've shown you guys on the current generation BMW iX or the brand new iX. It has the typical lock unlock buttons. It also has a remote start from the fob. You can also open up the trunk and you can also use BMW's uh, digital key function where you can use your phone as a key. You can use an Apple key or the Apple key function, and you can also use a card key uh, to get into the vehicle as well. Now, the door handles, you can see, uh, they're kind of like the new i4 and iX. You have to stick your hand here and then press a pressure pad. That will essentially open the door for you, and it's actually a power opening and closing door. Now, I will say the opening function, you still have to open it manually, but you can feel that it has motors behind that, and I'll show you guys how to close the door later on. But this white exterior of my tester is complemented by this kind of burgundy, brownish, reddish interior. This is the upgraded full merino leather with the leather stitching everywhere. You also have the optional carbon fiber trim with the glass controls, which are standard, and some metal speaker covers. You can see the door panel here is just beautiful. It's got real leather. It feels just as nice as the seats. You can see more of the crystal glass controls with the stainless steel 36 speaker Bowers and Wilkins stereo. That's an extra five grand, I believe. And then you can see more of that burgundy leather here on the lower door panels, which kind of extends throughout the rest of the door panel with some piano black plastic trim. The window controls, they're covered in a um, high gloss uh, black plastic trim, uh, which again, feels pretty high quality and tactile. It's one touch for all four. That's what you expect. I even noticed the carpet here looks like it's been taken out of a Rolls Royce. It almost looks like that uh, lamb's wool material that you find in all those expensive Rolls models. But getting inside, you can see the step-in is kind of low. It's a sedan. It's got, I think, five inches of ground clearance. And then when you want to shut the door, uh, you can either push this button right here, which you can see, it's not really a button. It's just a touchpad. The door actually slams with a super solid sounding thunk. And then when you want to get out, just push that. You can see it sort of opens the door and then you have to push it manually the rest of the way. And you can also set it to where if I just put my foot on the brake, on the driver's side only, obviously, that also closes the door for you. So again, no need to actually go and close the door manually. The 7 Series, if you guys go for the upgraded package, like the executive package, includes those automatic soft closing doors. But getting inside and then uh, starting it up, the start stop button is right here in the center console. Push that, you can hear the engine just 
fires to life. Uh, there's no traditional starter noise because this has a 48 volt mild hybrid system. And of course, the centerpiece of this interior is the current BMW iDrive 8 display. You can see it's a curved single piece display that has two actual displays in this glass piece. You have a 12 0.3 inch display over here, a bigger 14.9 inch display over here. It's just a huge upgrade versus iDrive 7. It looks very modern. It looks uh, really uh, tech heavy and expensive. I also love the fact that CarPlay is wireless. Uh, you also have over the air updates. You also have wireless Android Auto. You can see I love how CarPlay takes up the entire screen. It's very quick. It's really snappy. It's easy to use. A lot of the controls, however, all you BMW faithful are going to hate the fact that they've moved a lot of those hard buttons. Uh, into the actual screens, including the climate control. You can go to climate menu here. This is how you adjust all the different climate settings. There's four zone climate control in this vehicle with massaging front and rear seats. You can see here's the BMW GPS, which looks fine. It's uh, pretty much the same that you find in other BMW products, but just look at how fast the software is. It's just super quick, very snappy, very responsive. You can also swipe over here, go to the My BMW, where you can adjust all your different vehicle settings. It shows you your actual car in the screen. You can see here's where you can go into change some of the driver settings, the door settings, the exterior lighting, the interior ambient lighting, which by the way, if you guys are noticing the dash, this entire glass piece here is actually illuminated. BMW calls it their interaction bar, uh, and it basically illuminates based on whether the system is trying to tell you about problems or trying to communicate with you. If I push the hazard switch, you can also see um, it actually shows the blinking light in the hazards when the hazards are on to let you know that the vehicle has the hazards on. It just looks great. I haven't had a chance to see this at night, so I look forward to getting this vehicle for a full week to test and see how the intricate lighting is on this vehicle because Mercedes has always been the top player for that. So I'm curious to see how BMW does with their new 7 Series. Now you can see here, the upper dash here has, first of all, a heads up display with um, all your usual information stuff up there. You have real leather stitching along the entire portion of the dash. This is part of the full Merino upgraded leather package for an extra $5,000. Uh, so again, very much an option that you want to get if you guys want the ultimate in terms of luxury. This is the carbon fiber upgraded interior trim. You can also get several different styles of wood. Uh, this right here uh, controls your dash fence. You can see the vents. They almost look to be invisible, but this little slit right here in the middle and on that side and on the driver's side here is actually the vent. This is how you open and close that, or actually that's how you open the door, I'm sorry, which is pretty interesting. So you can actually open the door in several different ways. Although I think what happened there is I was actually sliding this, but that's still the vent. So I slid it too far and that's what opened the door. So this is how you open and close the vent. Uh, you can also control the dimmer there, their headlight controls there. And then the vent themselves, you can also change the flow by using this little manual toggle here. So you can adjust where you want the air to go. It's kind of the same thing over here on the center stack which again, you can open and close the vent by sliding that little touch slider over there. So that's all pretty cool. You can also open up the glove box by pushing that. You can see once the glove box opens, it's damped, it's lined with felt, it's a, vin, um, it's a bin style, which is nice. And then when you put the vehicle in reverse, you can see there's your full top-down 360 camera. It has trajectory, it has automatic parallel parking. It looks amazing, it has great graphics and whatnot. You can also change uh, all your different views and whatnot if you'd like to see more views. Um, there's even like a car wash view over here, which is interesting if you guys are deciding to take your $100,000 plus BMW through an automatic car wash. But again, all really great stuff. Uh, and this system here is relatively easy to use, but it does require a little bit of a learning curve, especially when you're trying to go into all your different apps. There's your different apps and menus and whatnot. This all works pretty much like a, a Google tablet. And you also have voice commands, so you can tell things like, hey, BMW, hey, BMW, Turn on my massaging seats. I will activate your downward massage. So again, the voice commands work pretty well. And uh, in the heads up display, it actually shows you what it actually heard you say. So I can say something like, hey, BMW. Hey, BMW. Turn on my cooled seat. OK, I will activate the seat cooling for the driver. So again, it works pretty well. Uh, and. I love the fact that the system is just easy to kind of, you know, talk with, to communicate with, so you can kind of get to your voice commands relatively quickly. Now down here you can see there's your wireless phone charging pad. You have two cup holders over here which have these own little individual lids with some piano black plastic trim. This all feels very sturdy, high quality, more carbon fiber with aluminum trim. Love the glass controls here for the iDrive controller. 
for your gear selector, for the start stop button, for your volume knob over here, which all looks very nice. This is actually standard on all trims. You have the adjustable air suspension where you can raise and lower the vehicle. You can change your different drive modes. You can see here BMW has gone a little bit cr crazy with their drive modes. There's personal, sport, efficient, expressive, relaxed, theater, and digital art. So again, you can actually change that from the rear seat as well. But again, it all is part of the theatrics for this vehicle. This is their flagship model, so you kind of expect that. These pads here on the armrest for the center stack and on the door panels are also heated. So if you guys have the heated seat on on a cold day, these will actually heat up as well, which is nice. Open this up, you can see it opens up with two different latches. There's two USB-C charging ports in there, which is nice. It's a pretty good size. This is nice and padded. It feels really expensive. The seats, these are also among the most comfortable that I've seen. However, it doesn't have that pillow that Mercedes gives you. The seats themselves adjust and I lost count like over 20 plus different ways. You actually can control the seats via this controller over here, which again has more glass controls. Uh, and you can also uh, activate your two-person memory, which is on both sides. You push that button over here, you can see this is where you can get to all your different controls where you can adjust the upper backrest. You can also adjust the headrest up and down. There's your lumbar support. Um, so. I like how BMW kind of keeps the control here more simple. It's an actual button that moves, although it's made of glass. This just looks super beautiful. And then if you wanna change more, you have to go into the actual screen. So again, it's gonna take a little bit of a learning curve, um, but once you kind of get past that, it's all really nice. You can see the steering wheel, really thick rim or thick bolstering extension. It's got a really thick rim. Uh, it's a power tilt and telescoping wheel, which is what you expect. It's got paddles on the wheel. That boost mode there, which you pull and hold that, it'll actually engage a 10 second boost function to give you maximum acceleration. You can also adjust your cruise control settings here. You can adjust some of the screen functions in here where you can kind of change the layout over here if you'd like, um, which again is all customizable via these controls. The horn. Sounds good, it's appropriate sounding given the you know size of this vehicle. But overall, the cabin is amazing. This is on par with the last BMW S class, or Mercedes-Benz S class that I was in, uh, on par with the new Genesis G90 as well. Way nicer versus the Audi A8 and the Lexus LS. And once you kind of get past the steep learning curve, I think a lot of people are gonna be shocked to see that BMW is finally taking some risk and making their interiors, especially for this model, feel very, very expensive and very uh, premium. So let's go ahead and move on to the best part of the new 7 Series, and that is the rear seat. If you guys splurge and get that executive rear seat package, first of all, the back seat itself has around 43 inches of legroom. 43 inches puts it in the same uh, size category as the S-Class. This has a few more inches of legroom versus the uh, Lexus LS and the Genesis G90. You can see on the passenger side, this is where you can kind of get the lounge seat. You can see there's actually an ottoman that'll pop out. It doesn't get that on the driver's side because you can't move the driver's seat forward like you can on the passenger side. But let's go ahead and get inside this wonderful back seat. Now, first of all, once you get in, I'm surprised that BMW puts the door close assist function over here. Um, the last Genesis G90 I, ha I had had it over here on the center console. I think that's actually the better location for it. But once you push that button, you can see the door shuts automatically for you, which is very nice. And then once you're back here, you can see the space is just plentiful. Uh, there is a very large hump here that's gonna take up your space. Uh, this vehicle does have seating for up to five because there is a center seat. And if you guys are wondering where the pillows are, they're here in the back seat if you guys go for this executive package. And then over here, you can see that is the theater screen that's folded up. You can see this, uh, sunshade actually comes when you want to open it it actually opens and closes the reverse direction i'll show you that later there's this beautiful alcantara headliner material the anthracite alcantara with leather stitching on even the grab handles over here there's your usb-c charging ports which you find both of them right there along with a kind of like a connection there a mounting point for a tablet and then on both sides if you guys go for the rear seat package upgrade package for three grand you get a 5.5 inch tablet screen here built into the door pocket so instead of a screen here in the center bmw gives you two individual screens on each of the doors you can see this is where you can go to your home display here and this is where you can adjust a couple of things. The blinds, you can basically control them from here. You can open and close all of them. You can see there's all your sunshades. You can see there it actually is opening from the back to the front, which is the opposite way. Usually it goes from the back to the front or the front to the back. So that's really strange. You can see these lights are actually light up at night. Um, they are part of the uh, LED ambient lighting that you get. And then you can see here, with it all open, there's a lot more light in this back seat, but you can just manually close them all very quickly just by tapping that right there. You can see it's all very quick. The one thing is, however, this uh, shade, once it's up, you literally can't see out of the back. 
some brands allow you, or most brands allow you to still see through the, the shade itself when you're looking back there. So I'm surprised BMW doesn't do that. Um, going out of this screen, let's go ahead and open up the Pisto Resistance. Hit the display button there, and then hit fold down via theater mode. And this actually puts the drive mode into theater mode. You can see, you hear the audio and the theatrics. You see that 31 point or three inch screen pop down. This is an 8K resolution screen uh, using a 5G hotspot. Uh, it also is a touch screen and you can also adjust where the screen is. You can see, oh my God, guys, this is just absolutely stupid. Now I will say when this screen is down, you can't see anything out of that rear view mirror and that rear view mirror is not digital. So that's super annoying that BMW didn't include a digital camera rear view mirror. It just seems like a necessity when you have this amazing feature, which basically turns the rear seat into your own personal movie theater. Now I will say this takes a little bit of a second to load up and here you can actually adjust um, the level or the positioning of this. You can see there it's up right now. And then there's all your different sources. You can see you have all of these streaming services like YouTube, Prime Video, you have Netflix, uh, you have Amazon. This is Amazon Fire TV. Once you have a 5G connection, which the SIM needs, the eSIM needs to be configured. Uh, this right here is a touchscreen and it just looks amazing. You can also change the, um, the ratio, aspect ratio of this to take up the full screen or do a kind of a split screen design. So that's all really cool. You can also bring this screen closer if you need to reach it closer so you can actually touch it. This is a $5,000 upcharge on the 740i. It's included with the executive rear seat package, part of a $7,000 package, but this to me is worth every penny if you guys want the ultimate back seat. So that's pretty cool. Um, hit the seat button over here. I wanna show you guys this really cool function. We're on this model here. You push that lounge setting, you can see the front seat starts to move forward and out of the way. It actually takes a little bit of time. We're gonna see it in actual progress on this video, but I'd say it probably takes like a, a good 10 or 20 seconds or so. You can see the front seat will recline forward all the way. It'll start to push out of the way as well. And then it starts to move forward and then it's going to lower this little plate right there, which is technically a footrest. Uh, you can see the ottoman is starting to lift up for me, which is pretty nice. And this is really where you can take advantage of the fact that you have a chauffeur, if you have a chauffeur, somebody to drive you in. Uh, this, again, will slide forward. The rear seat back will recline. And then you can see there's the footrests. So I can kind of literally just sit back here with my feet crossed, watching a movie, allowing somebody to drive me. And you can see the seat themselves, they fold down, or this reclines, this pillow is super comfortable. Uh, and with the shade and everything, you just feel super private back here. It's amazing. This seat back actually also raises up to give me an even more angled back recline. So I can literally take a nap back here uh, and I can also turn on the massaging function, which you do from the screen over here. It has all the same different levels of massage from the front seat. So this is totally worth the $7,000 option that BMW is gonna charge for that. And then over here on the center console, I forgot to mention there's some storage here, wireless phone charging pad, beautiful leather stitching. Um, and then these seats obviously don't fold down, but guys, really, this back seat is the most impressive rear seat that I've seen in the segment, and it's going to be a huge selling factor for BMW. So I suspect a lot of brands are going to start to uh, do their own version of this, but we're in a world where you basically have your own private movie theater in the back and seats that are probably more comfortable than the living room that you find in your home. <laughs> Now, BMW claims that the new 7 Series is the best car to drive and the best car to be driven in. So, we are starting off this video, obviously, in the driver's seat. This is the V8 version. Uh, BMW will launch it with a six-cylinder, a V8, and, of course, the i7, which only comes as an X uh, Drive 60, which is supposedly going to match the performance of this V8. But with this V8, it's a twin-turbo V8. Uh, making 536 horsepower, connected to a 48-volt mild hybrid system, uh, and one of the smoothest eight-speed automatic transmissions in the business. I have to say, my expectations are high for this new 7 Series, driven the new S-Class, driven the newest Genesis G90, the Lexus LS, the latest Audi A8, which is due for replacement. This car is fast, and it feels very much like a flagship. You expect it to feel like a flagship. It's a BMW flagship. But let's go ahead and see what we can do zero to 60 wise. It does have a sport boost function. We'll launch it here. Oh my fuck. <laughs> wow. 
That was probably the most immediate response that I've ever felt from an internal combustion engine vehicle. Now, sadly, my uh, zero to 60 testing equipment, I forgot to bring a crucial and external antenna, so I can't test out zero to 60 here. I'll have to wait until I get this car back home to test. But BMW claims 4.1 seconds for this model, which we all know the Germans, they're conservative. I suspect this car will probably do it in well under four seconds, 3.7, 3.8. Um, but what shocks me, because it has that 48 volt mild hybrid system, just the responsiveness of, of this engine. In sport plus mode, just put your foot down here. Once the transmission downshifts, it just has torque, a very incredible wave of torque, and it just pushes you back so hard into the seat. Um, and it also has the classic V8 noises. I mean, this car and the S-Class uh, and the Audi are one of the few vehicles that still offer a V8. As you guys know, Lexus went to a V6. Genesis only offers a V6 as well. Um, but whew, this thing is quick. So I'm looking forward to getting this one back home to test for a full week to see what I can do zero to 60 wise. But let's switch the drive mode here because this is not necessarily about driving performance all the time. This is their flagship luxury car, and you want it to also have a relaxed feel. And let me tell you, switching the drive mode here to expressive, there's also, BMW's gone crazy with their drive modes here. There's also a relaxed drive mode, which we don't want the relaxed drive mode because it almost closed on my, <laughs> the sunroof thing on my camera. But the one thing I'm noticing about this vehicle, when I have the rear shade up in relaxed mode, it completely blocks out my view out of the rear which is stupid because this car doesn't offer a digital camera rear view mirror. Like that is a frustratingly annoying absence that the Germans have been doing, I've noticed. Like Mercedes doesn't offer it. Uh, I don't believe Audi offers it either. Uh, and this is where, this is the car that could really use that because we'll talk about that theater screen later on in the video. When that's down, this view is also blocked entirely. So don't put it in that mode. We'll go back into sport here. Let me go ahead and open up the stupid rear shade because I cannot see anything there, open rear blind. And you can see that totally blocks out your view, which is good if you're watching a movie. Obviously you wanna be able to block out those shades, but let's go ahead and switch here, the drive modes. Let's make sure I'm in Sport Plus there for the damping. I'm also in Sport, which is good. So we're gonna come up on this back road here to see what this car is like in terms of handling because BMW says again, this is the best car to drive. And I have to say, this car has the adaptive air suspension. It's got their four wheel steering system. In sport plus mode with everything here, the eight speed auto just really does a great job of putting the engine right in the meat of the power band. The steering in this car also, BMWs have struggled in the past with getting the steering right. It's still a little bit too light for me, but I have to say it's very quick, it's very snappy. It actually has a surprising amount of feedback to uh, telling me what the front tires are doing. And the fact that I'm piloting a 5,000 pound, 212 inch long luxury car, and this thing just literally eats up the miles and eats up the road, it reminds you constantly that BMW builds the ultimate driving machine. And listen to that sound, guys. That is a fantastic noise. I love the soundtrack coming out of that V8. It's I'm not entirely sure if it's augmented or not, but it sounds good, so I really don't care. This feels a hell of a lot sportier than the last S580 AMG line that I drove, which was honestly just about a month ago I drove that. And the suspension stays nice and planted and flat. This is where I'm noticing the steering could use a little bit more uh, heft here, but the body controls are just phenomenal. The visibility is good. The brakes feel good. The seats also hug me and they hold me in place quite firmly, which is nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised. I've never had this much fun driving a big executive saloon on a twisty back road here, or a mountain canyon road here in Palm Springs. But wow, BMW, this is fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and you can see all the other 7 Series are coming back because I'm at this BMW's annual test fest right now. <laughs> Wow. Now I'll have to wait until I can drive this vehicle for a little bit longer to test out the driver assistance, but BMW claims their new highway driving assist technology allows for hands-free driving up to 80 miles an hour out on closed highways, which in this segment, you want that kind of technology because it just adds to the whole creature comforts. But right now I'm just kind of enjoying the drive in this car. Visibility is good. <laughs> 
I'm shocked. I'm genuinely shocked. This thing hides its weight so well. Wow, BMW. If you can get rid, if you can get past the polarizing design of this vehicle, the drive is just phenomenal. It, it, it has amazing ride quality. You put it into comfort. It's so quiet. It's smooth. It's just so relaxed. And even though the V8 is very much a lot of car, uh, the six cylinder model, which I don't have uh, the opportunity to drive here at this event, probably is gonna be most of the engine that anyone will need. Although I'll be hopping into the i7 later today. But uh, from a driving perspective, the new seven series is sublime. It feels so incredibly sharp and balanced. It hides its weight so well. And for those of you who want an executive flagship sedan that occasionally like to go slow drive the vehicle, this should very much be at the top of your list. So while the Mercedes-Benz S-Class continues to be the top seller in this segment, and it also has the highest owner loyalty rates, the 7 Series has always been a close second. And I have to say, after spending the day driving the fully redesigned 7th generation version, BMW has really stepped up their game with this all new flagship sedan. It has an interior that finally feels like it's much nicer and much different versus what you're gonna find in the current generation 5 Series, especially if you guys are looking for the theatrics with that large 31 inch theater screen that you can basically stream your favorite movies through or uh, movies too with Amazon Fire TV. The driving dynamics of this car also surprised me. The 4.4 liter V8 is the perfect powertrain for the internal combustion engine vehicles. I haven't had a chance to drive the inline six. I suspect that'll also be good. However, if you want all wheel drive, you have to go for this V8 version. I suspect zero to 60 will be under four seconds. We'll test that out whenever we get one of these for a full week back in our home area to see what we can get in terms of real world testing. The seats are comfortable. The technology in this vehicle in terms of the interface, iDrive 8 is also really good, but also slightly overwhelming. You need to spend some time with this vehicle and kind of get used to it. The back seat has a ton of space. Legroom is actually the same, if not more, versus the current 7 Series. And whether you love or, the, or you hate the design, you can't deny the fact that the interior is among the best in the industry in terms of quality, in terms of luxury, in terms of technology. And that's kind of what makes the new 7 Series such a good vehicle. And it's really impressive to see BMW really stepping up their game. Now, speaking of which, if you are looking to buy the new gas-powered 7 Series or the 7 Series in general. These are heading to dealerships right now as we speak and they start at around $93,500 for the 740i with rear-wheel drive. Uh, obviously that's the base price. It actually undercuts the S-Class by almost $20,000, which is pretty significant. It's crazy to me how BMW was able to price this car so extremely well. Now, if you guys want the V8 version, it's gonna cost you at least $113,800. So that's putting it way closer in line with the S-Class, which starts at around $111,000. Um, if you guys want the electric version, that's another $6,000 on top of this car, uh, which if you guys want to go all EV. Now, my particular tester here has several options on it from the executive package to the rear seat entertainment package to that theater screen to the 21 inch wheels. This one here comes in at just over $149,000. I know nearly 150 grand. However, you guys saw with the interior, which basically offers near Rolls Royce levels of luxury. However, the technology is far better versus any Rolls Royce currently in production. This car here represents for me a strong value and it's also a really nice car to drive and to be driven in. So BMW, you did a fantastic job in the new 7 Series. Only time will tell whether the buying public will warm up to the very polarizing exterior design. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 BMW 760i uh, xDrive. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.